ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon to all of you. How are you all of you doing today? My name is Alvin Tay and I'm with the NUS and I'm also your host for today's webinar sessions on the new Master of Science in Digital FinTech uh, degree program. So on behalf of the NUS team looking after the program, we thank you for taking precious time to join us today. I had a look at the registration list earlier and I understand that we got friends from all over everywhere like China, India, Indonesia and even US and also not forgetting our own Singapore over here. So now here's what we will be treating you guys to today. We will be kicking things off with the webinar uh, presentation in a bit and then we will be followed by the Q&A segment where we will be answering all your questions that covers the NUS Master of Science in uh, Digital FinTech program. So we will be taking questions submitted only via the Q&A segment later. So you can start leaving your questions for the NUS team in the Q&A section just about right now. Okay, so during the session, you can start keying all your questions there. So until the end of the session. So as we speak, our NUS uh, backstage team are already monitoring the session and ready to pluck out the questions that you can feature later. So uh, there's no need to wait until the Q&A segment to properly lock your questions in. So get them in as soon as you think of them. Okay, right now, let me just uh, introduce uh, the speakers for today's session. Our first speaker, Professor Chin Wing An, will introduce the NUS School of Computing. Prof Ching is the Vice Dean of Graduate Studies at NUS School of Computing and holds a PhD in Computing from Imperial College of Science, Technology and Medicine in UK. His area of specialization is in program languages and software engineering. He is also an accomplished keynote speaker and bestowed a long service award in 2016 by the Singapore Prime Minister Office. Our second speaker, Associate Prof Wang Ke Wei, who will be introducing the program in details later on. Uh, Prof Wang is with the NUS School of Computing Department of Information Systems and holds a PhD in Information Systems from the Stern School of Business at New York University. His field of specializations and research is in the economics of information system, business analytics, and e-commerce. And he has published scholarly articles in top research journals. Having received four teaching awards while at NUS, Prof Wang is also passionate about stimulating in children in the interest of STEAM too. Also joining us today at the Q&A segment, we have Associate Professor Johan Suleiman. Prof Johan is Dean's Chair and with the Department of Finance at the NUS Business School. He is also the Academic Director of the NUS Master of Science in Finance program and holds a PhD in Finance from University of Texas at Austin. He is a fellow of the Asian Bureau of Finance and Economics Research and a research member of the ECGI, also known as the European Corporate Governance Institute. His research has been published in internationally renowned journals and cited in various international publications, including the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Without further ado, let me invite our first speaker, Professor Ching Wing An, on the virtual stage right now. Prof Ching, please. Thank you, Alvin. So I'm currently the uh, Vice Dean for Graduate Studies in the School of Computing. And this program uh, has been kind of uh, led and initiated uh, by our school in collaboration with um, Business School as well as you know, the Asian Institute of Digital Finance uh, Institute uh, that was recently set up. I'll tell a bit more about the background of the program and how it's going to be run in a short while. But before that, uh, my segment here will mainly be covering, uh, firstly, the university as well as the School of Computing, okay? And why uh, you may wish to consider joining us uh, for this program. So uh, NUS, as you know, is the um, oldest university in Singapore, not very old, about 110 years old. I think it was set up in uh, 1905, initially as a medical school. And the university over the years has transformed itself from a teaching university, gradually into a research intensive university. And it has over, at this moment, right at this moment, 17 faculties of which the School of Computing is one of the faculty, uh, 30,000 undergraduates and 10,000 graduate students. And in Singapore itself, we have uh, three campus. The main campus is in Kent Ridge. And then we also have a campus in Bukit Timah where the law faculty is based in. And also, uh, you know, a medical school in Outram, 
that is next to the uh, Singapore General Hospital. And we have a number of research institutes. And one of the things I wish to highlight uh, about the university is uh, one of the in strategic in initiatives the university has taken over the years. In fact, uh, over 20 years, starting with uh, overseas college in Silicon Valley. So about the year 2000, they started this college. I think this is a really strategic initiative that really transformed the university from being just research in intensive to uh, in innovative university. And uh, over the years, we have uh, set up colleges uh, all around the world. I think four in China, uh, most recent one in Nagoya. And the uh, idea of that program is really to send our students out, you know, mostly undergraduate, but sometimes graduate students as well, to uh, spend a year uh, you know, with our partner university taking some classes and also to work in a startup company in order to build up their uh, entrepreneurship sort of uh, uh, interest and also um, inclination. So that's just a brief introduction of the university and some of the things that's happening in the university over the years. Uh, for the Masters of Science in uh, Digital Financial Technology, we kind of uh, started working on this program uh, in conjunction with the, uh, you know, the uh, Asian Institute of Digital Finance that was actually, uh, that is currently being funded by our Monetary Authority of Singapore together with our uh, National Research Foundation, okay? And uh, the, the program itself, uh, the, the design of this program was led by the School of Computing in order, you know, this uh, digital FinTech uh, master's program in order to, uh, you know, center it uh, mostly on the technology, technological side and then also uh, leveraging on the business school to provide the, um, the finance domain, you know? Uh, but at the end of the day, we will be uh, having uh, the Asian Institute of Digital Finance to help us run this master's program together with the uh, PhD program in FinTech that is also, uh, also newly launched this year. For the uh, School of Computing, we have a number of master's programs. This year, uh, you know, instantly we launched sort of a two new master's programs. One is the general track that was launched in January that is meant to help uh, students from other dis disciplines convert into the computing discipline. And this uh, FinTech uh, master's program uh, will, be, will be started. The first batch will be uh, from August. And uh, for, the, for the school itself, we also have uh, you know, a, a program that we've been running for the last 20 plus years, the Master's of Computing program uh, with uh, four different specializations from computer science, information system, information security to artificial intelligence. And also in partnership with uh, you know, our sister department in other universities, for example, uh, with the BIS school, we have a business analytics masters that's been running for about eight years now, very successful one, and also one of the pioneering uh, masters program in this area. And then we also have uh, recently, uh, I think three years ago, have this uh, MSc Industry 4.0 that is managed by scale. And, uh, and where we are one of the collaborators and also the data science and machine learning that is being managed uh, uh, by science. So both School of Computing and uh, FOS are running this master's program. For the school itself, uh, let me just briefly introduce the school. Uh, we have two main departments. The, the bigger department is the computer science department where we have about 80 faculties. And then we also have the information system analytics uh, you know, department that where we have about uh, 30 plus uh, tenure track faculty. And just to uh, kind of quickly go through the history of the uh, School of Computing, we actually started out as a department in 75, the Department of Computer Science. And then as we have two programs, you know, Computer Science and Information System, we uh, renamed the department to a Department of Information System and Computer Science, this, you know. Uh, that was in uh, 1983 where we were placed uh, together under the Faculty of Science. But since uh, 20 years ago, we have been an uh, independent school comprising of uh, these two departments. And I think this change is uh, kind of um, important because it allowed the school to chart new direction and also to uh, make uh, rapid uh, progress you know, in, in this area. So we have been... Um, you know, running, for example, just for example, our undergraduate program, we currently have five under, undergraduate programs. 
apart from the computer science information system, we also have the business analytics undergraduate program that is under DISA. And also we have the uh, information security program. And also we have another program on computer engineering that is uh, in collaboration with the faculty of engineering. So in, th in terms of, uh, you know, staff strength, you know, about these are the staff strengths, including uh, good technical support and mean and technical support. Student-wise, we take in right now about 1,000 undergraduates a year, about 300 plus uh, master's students a year, and about 100 uh, PhD students a year. So these numbers are cumulative over, you know, you know four, two years, and also uh, for PhD is typically about four years. And the school, the school believe in uh, working with industry and also, you know, seeking um, uh, insights from industry. So we have an advisory board that is uh, comprised of uh, captains of industry in Singapore, you know, either uh, both, um, uh, mostly CTO and uh, of both, uh, you know, big corporations, big IT corporations, such as uh, Google, you know, and also some uh, major startup enterprises, um, big companies like uh, uh, PSA, they employ many of our undergraduates, and also the government sector like MAS, uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore, and uh, I think even GIC. Uh, so this, this comprise uh, our advisory committee that meets about four times a year. And every time we have a new proposal, including this um, FinTech master, we you know, we uh, discuss with them our proposal and then get feedback from them in order to fine tune the program, uh, you know, taking into consideration uh, industry feedback. We also work with uh, industry in uh, two other ways, you know. Um, twice a year, we hold a career fairs to, um, you know, provide recruitment opportunities to companies in Singapore. And also we have internships where undergraduates are, you know, they have to take at least one internship uh, during their undergraduate uh, curriculum. So we also provide internship opportunities through, through companies that we partner with. And uh, in addition to recruitment and a job opportunity for our students, we also uh, participate in uh, research. We have uh, many research labs. Uh, a number of them are in partnership with uh, corporations like this Singtel NUS Corporate Lab uh, in the cyber security space and also labs um, in various areas. Some of them are in trustworthy system and, and also in collaboration with uh, uh, you know, different universities as well. Like for example, this uh, Encrypt Lab, I think they have collaboration with uh, Zhejiang University. And then also um, we partner with Grab recently, I think in July 2018, we set up an AI lab uh, together with them. Okay. So we, and apart from these labs, uh, there are also many projects where our academic staff uh, work with the industry partner on some uh, specific re research directions. So what's the mission of the university? What is the main mission? Uh, really, it can be summarized by three main uh, factors that we uh, aim for. Uh, one, to have a quality education, both at the undergraduate and uh, graduate level. Like at the undergraduate level, we provide many opportunities to our best students to do double degree, concurrent degree, and also exchange opportunities. And in addition to the NOC uh, sort of um, uh, startup sort of, uh, uh, opportunities that, that they, they can get also, okay? And at the graduate level, uh, we focus on a program that, um, you know, help our graduates or help uh, graduates in Singapore, as well as um, from overseas to upgrade themselves. Um, just to help those that are working, we also have a part-time option in the case of the Masters of Computing program. And the other mission we had is to uh, stress on uh, high impact research. Okay, and both this aim really is to support, um, you know, to make sure that the program at the university are beneficial to the society and also beneficial to the industry at large. So as uh, just to, 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 to recap, 
you know, to summarize, uh, what our philosophy is, is to try to allow stronger students to specialize more deeply where possible. And also to try to add, uh, you know, value to the member of our uh, students by, by making them more industry oriented and more prepared, uh, have fundamental skills that can, um, you know, um, meet their demand over the lifetime and also to have um, uh, train them in a good communication and also marketing skills. So let me just highlight uh, some of the, you know, um, some of my faculty members, you know, in terms of teaching and research, and also some of the success uh, that, you know, that, that, are exhibit, that are shown by our students. And just highlight uh, a few things like our, our faculties, they are dedicated, uh, you know, professors in teaching and research. Uh, here we have um, two of our young faculty who has, uh, who happen to be also our own undergraduate and also PhD graduate. Uh, they, they won um, Xiang Hui and also uh, Stephen here who won uh, excellent teaching award a couple of times. And these are some of our faculty who joined us recently and they have been also awarded the NRF fellowship in the AI space you know, a multi-million sort of uh, uh, grant uh, to support them in their research. And uh, we have here uh, our former dean, uh, Professor Wei Beng Chin, who, who happened to uh, won the top national honors in science, I think about three years ago. And also here is our, our dean, uh, Professor Mohan Kankahali, uh, at one of the launch uh, for a FinTech lab uh, that was recently uh, supported by, um, uh, on, I think by, by Ripple, I guess. So it's a teaching lab, but the Ripple provided some fund to support this uh, FinTech lab. And uh, for our colleagues who are really outstanding, uh, they have also been um, winners of uh, awards at the university level. So every year the university recognizes, you know, their top scholars in teaching and research. And uh, these are two of the, our colleagues who have won this uh, honor. In, in, I think, in, I think Ben Leong here won the honor about maybe four years ago. And then I think uh, Su Yuan Jin won this honor about last year. Okay? And then we also have um, our colleague here who you uh, Hai in the distributed computing area that won a best paper award in the uh, one very important conference in uh, para and distributed sort of algorithm SPA uh, 2020. Uh, our students, you know, we are also very proud of our students uh, for uh, participating and also winning in um, uh, hackathon competitions and also in uh, conferences where they, for example, this one is a multimedia conference where uh, our, our student won the um, best paper award and uh, and also here we have uh, two of our current PhD students who were recently, um, you know, given the uh, prestigious Microsoft Research Asia Fellowship Award. And we also have master students who participate in uh, competition and also uh, win in this competition. And I think last but not least, I just highlight, you know, one very successful PhD student of ours, uh, Loy here, who I think graduated about two years ago. And uh, the remarkable thing about him is that, you know, in, his, in the course of his PhD, he published uh, three very significant research paper in top conferences. And uh, on top of that, uh, he managed to uh, raise about $52 million of uh, startup fund. And uh, because of that uh, opportunity to, to um, uh, start up a company in the crypto space, I think he, he also asked to be able to graduate a bit earlier so that he, in fact, had graduated uh, in a um, three-year time window, I think. And that's from bachelor's. So he came in as a bachelor's student, complete his PhD in three years, and then move on to uh, this uh, startup opportunity you know, under a uh, uh, crypto sort of area. Uh, these are some other student achievements that we are you know, happy to share with you. Uh, in particular, one that I thought was a bit relevant for me to say is uh, this uh, award, I think that was, I think, given last 
just this this month by the Singapore Computer Society in recognition of uh, this team of students who was instrumental together with I think the Singapore Armed Force to put out this uh, Trace Together app, uh, you know, at the national level to facilitate uh, COVID um, contact tracing. Okay. And I, just to mention that this particular project was actually undertaken uh, by a center which we call the Computing for Social Good Center that is meant to start up projects uh, to help voluntary and, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, charity organizations. So, so they run a number of projects every year by undergraduate students to help uh, beef up the IT systems of this organization. And uh, this was one of the efforts, uh, but undertaken, undertaken at the national level because of the need at that time. So um, I did mention about the NOC and how it helped inculcate um, innovation and entrepreneurship opportunities. Um, at the school itself, we also have a unique core fairness that help to facilitate, um, you know, incubate, start up uh, possibilities for our students as well as our staff. And I think we, we don't provide, so it's a kind of like a first stage sort of um, incubation where we provide uh, space. You know, if you have a good idea, we provide space, we provide infrastructure support. And very importantly, we provide also mentorship. So this sort of allow uh, quite a number of com companies to uh, start off. And when they become uh, you know, more established, they can move on to other incubation at both the university level as well as the national level, okay? And I think uh, some of these companies are very successful in the sense that now they, they may have hundreds, like for example, Chi-Square have hundreds of employees and also Vicencia, which was started by one of our PhD students. They recently, I think in 2019, two years ago, received a series C funding. So something like $20 million of funding that would have valued the company at about 100 to 200 million. But I also recently heard, I don't know whether you heard of the, a, the, a, a new unicorn that was a spawn off of uh, NUS, maybe the first one as well, which I happened to miss out in my you know, list here. And this, this was a, a, a company that came from uh, two students Okay, two students, one from engineering, the other one from the School of Computing, in fact, from the Information System Department, uh, Kerway's uh, department, uh, where they recently received a series uh, E funding, I think $300 million of funding that will actually value the company, uh, you know, uh, at more than a billion dollars. Okay, so, so these are just some of the, uh, and, and also this, this two students also went through the NOC uh, that the university had, I think in 2007, I think. All right, so I will kind of uh, finish now with uh, this uh, sort of highlights on some of the successes, some of the achievements that both my colleagues as well as our students have, uh, you know, made uh, in their journey. And uh, we have about 40 plus years of history in the computing education. And as a faculty, we started in about 1998, so about 20, 20 plus years as a faculty. And, um, and I think, you know, I, I hope uh, later on uh, when uh, my colleague Kawe introduced, you know, the MSc in Digital FinTech program, it will interest uh, some of you. Uh, here I gave a background of uh, our uh, Com tree. So this is the third building in the School of Computing that is still undergoing construction, but is expected to complete uh, in uh, August. And some of you who you know uh, are able to join us uh, will uh, definitely be able to uh, you know uh, uh, utilize uh, this uh, new new building space that we will be having. And just as a final cap off, uh, though I don't quite. Um, you know, want, want to uh, sort of uh, follow strictly the uh, QS uh, world ranking or pay too much attention to it. We will kind of uh, 
pleasantly surprised that uh, this year, you know, traditionally we have been ranked about 10 uh, worldwide, but in this year's uh, QS uh, world ranking, they put us uh, fourth globally. So, so a kind of uh, ple pleasant surprise, but at the same time, uh, not something we want to crowd about because I think we always believe in, um, you know, our main missions. Uh, our main mission is really to focus on the basics and also to uh, provide opportunities for our students and also to try and do research that are impact and also uh, work with industry to try to innovate uh, where possible. So with that, I would like to uh, finish off my sort of, I, I hope I didn't overrun the time and then pass on to Kerwei to talk about the uh, master's program itself. Thank you, Prof Chin for the wonderful sharing. Right now, let me uh, invite Professor Huang onto the virtual stage now. She'll be sharing on the uh, details of the program. Thank Prof you, Huang, please. Okay, so everyone can see my screen, right? So I'm sharing the uh, slides. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for spending the uh, weekend afternoon with us. Hopefully <clears throat> in the next couple, uh, to about 20 minutes, I'll help you understand uh, more about our program and also uh, answer some of the questions mm -hmm. you have put into the Q&A. Actually, I didn't have for the question. The information is in the slides I'm going to uh, share with you. So uh, I'm Dr. Huang Kenwei. I'm also the uh, graduate programs uh, director for the Asian Institute uh, of Digital Finance. So uh, AIDF, it's a very new research institute. We just established last year. So it's an important initiative, uh, co a collaboration between MAS, which is the central bank together with the SEC in USA uh, of Singapore and with NUS. So the team, uh, we started working with MAS starting back maybe two, three years ago and led by the provost of NUS. So it's a very important uh, university level research institute. So after two, three years of working on the uh, proposals and the plan, finally it was approved last year in 2020. And we start uh, operation uh, in the second half of last year. So this year we're going to launch the new master program and also new uh, FinTech PhD program in August uh, 2021. So now the application are uh, starting. So all of you are very welcome to apply for the uh, master and the PhD program. So today my presentation will be mostly about master program. There's only one slide toward the end about the PhD program. Back to the AIDF. So on the AIDF, we have a large uh, grant. Uh, there are five uh, 2 million, uh, say around 2 million US dollar research grant. There are five of them. They are also, uh, we are working on, uh, say, call for proposals for several half million uh, dollar projects. So we have many uh, sufficient research funding to fund several very innovative research projects. At the same time, we have the two new educational program. We also run in the, uh, say, industry training programs. Together, we will also have a FinTech incubation center. So Prof. Chin uh, explained several successful cases of startups. So if you are interested in that, uh, under AIDF and NUS, we have several uh, mechanisms and uh, that will help you to be successful. So the AIDF founding director is Professor Duan, and he's a world-class, well-known uh, researcher in finance. Under the AIDF, we have affiliated faculty member all over NUS. So including the school computing biz, faculty of science and the faculty of engineering. So for more information about AIDF, you can find it on our internet. So every month we will organize a, a workshop or event. Now it's because of COVID-19, but there's pros and cons. So most of the event you can also access through uh, online virtual channels. So like we already August, organized one event, which is about using natural language processing in finance or accounting research. And uh, uh, the last last one we have is about uh, digital assets. So if you are interested in, you can also follow us on the uh, website for the coming events. Then uh, what is FinTech? Uh, the definition of FinTech is a broad spectrum of new technology and innovation that uh, aims to compete with traditional business models of financial services. That means moving money around, borrowing and lending investment. 
So examples are all kinds of payment solution, all kinds of borrowing and lending, and uh, from the uh, lender's perspective, like banks. So they are, it, it involves how to use AI machine learning to evaluate the borrowers, various kinds of credit innovations. And that this also, of course, FinTech includes the disruptive new technology blockchain. So uh, blockchain is the fundama fundamental technology of cryptocurrencies and smart contracts. Those will be very important disruptive technologies in the coming years. So those are, those are the uh, examples of FinTech innovations. So Singapore has been regarded as the, uh, say, one of the most important FinTech innovation hub globally, not just in Asia, in all of the ranking. So for example, in Thomson Reuters ranking, we ranked number one in the 2018. And uh, in almost all of the ranking, Singapore is always within uh, top five and uh, usually top three, top four, because it's like New York, London, Tokyo, and so on. So uh, that's also a great uh, achievement of our government. So the FinTech in industry is also booming in Singapore. So I believe most of you want to apply for the uh, FinTech master program because you want to uh, find a, a career in this area. So they are about, currently there are about 1,000 FinTech uh, startups in Singapore. So the number really growing very, very fast. I started working on the uh, proposal of our AIDF and the educational program two, three years. So every year when I update the slides, the number keeps growing exponentially. It's like two years ago, it's only 500. Last year, it's 700. Now uh, I update the slides few days ago, now the number is 1,000 uh, think tank companies in Singapore. So it's 10 times more than the number uh, in 2015. And uh, that's also because a lot of the think tank startups, they are headquartered in Singapore, but the main business, their market, the customers are not in Singapore. It's in ASEAN, it could be in India, it could be in China, or you could be talking at a customer from all over the world. That's why there are a lot of the uh, fintech startups in Singapore. And also a lot of the uh, venture capitalist funding are funding the, uh, these 1,000 fintech startups in Singapore. So the industry is really booming, growing very fast. And uh, uh, the source of the data is from 2000, uh, 2020 fintech talent survey. So it's an annual survey conducted by the fintech, Singapore Fintech Association. So the information is public. So you can go online, Google, you can download it and uh, see all of the details about FinTech talent survey, what kind of skills are in demand in the FinTech industry in Singapore in the last couple of years. So, and also what are examples of the uh, FinTech companies and FinTech startups. So uh, here, probably the font size is a little bit small, depending on your screen, and uh, you can read the details uh, later. So, and uh, what are the uh, typical job uh, job career or job roles. That's what I'm going to explain to you in the uh, next uh, couple of slides. So the goal of the high level goal of the FinTech master program is we will try to train the students so they will meet the search in the FinTech talent demand in the Singapore's uh, local market. So that's also why MAS, uh, when we started it, uh, NUS started talking to MAS to set up the AIDF. One thing I think both parties agree upon very fast, there's no issue, is exactly the FinTech master program. Because there's a, a, a lot of the, the FinTech startups, they need a lot of the FinTech talent. And earlier, we rely more on the uh, foreigners. And the MMS and the government see this trend. So they, they are, how to say, they try to de design various kind of policies to uh, meet the increasing job market demand. That's why in the very beginning, they already are very happy NUS is going to establish a new FinTech master program. So we can help them solve part of the problem, especially they tell us to uh, try to train high quality students to meet the high end side of the FinTech talent uh, shortage. So the survey uh, include the important question about uh, whether they want to hire more FinTech talent in the coming years and what kind of uh, job roles they need to, they are, they want to hire more uh, employees. Then a little bit surprisingly, also surprising to me is it's very, very optimistic. I believe it's because the COVID-19, so a lot of companies probably they cannot hire uh, new staff 
or they freeze the hiring in the last year and maybe uh, this year. So uh, in the coming years, they're going to hire even more than usual. So you can see, uh, especially the next slide, this is uh, directly copied from the survey. You can see 97% of the uh, company being surveyed, they all want to hire more employees in the coming year. And uh, also in the survey, he surveyed the company, said, what are the type of uh, job categories, job roles in your company? And are you going to hire more or less? In Singapore, the government policy, it's a very well-rounded, well-designed. So we believe in uh, doing very everything quite systematically. So we will survey the company. We understand what's the, uh, say, kind of job role that is in shortage. And then, uh, say, the government will coordinate with NUS to try to design and the uh, curriculum that can uh, meet the industry demand. So the six out of 13 categories, job categories at fintech companies are in shortage, especially the one for our program, we try to develop students to meet the demand are software and application development, data analytics, big data, data scientists, AI, machine learning, cognitive computing. So those three are uh, from the industry advisory board. Prof Chin showed you earlier. I present the slides to them and then specific, specifically tell me, say they need these three areas talent. And uh, actually they need all six, but the other two, I think they also uh, comment. So like network infrastructure, cybersecurity. Uh, and US School Computing, we have several other programs. They, we specialize on those areas. And uh, so for FinTech, we train uh, for all of the five types of employees, but we will focus more on the, uh, say, software development for fintech startups, and also not just startup fintech companies, and also uh, AI machine learning data science. To be more specific about the uh, job roles, for example, the fintech software developers, and uh, uh, especially if you work for a smaller company, you, this kind of job could be a large company like all of the local banks, insurance companies, and uh, but if you are working for startups then it's much better the developer, they should know more about their product, right? Because the developer, their job role properly cover more tasks rather than just focusing a very uh, focused, small component of a large software product. And uh, uh, the, the second one, so the number one, when I designed the curriculum working with all of the professor, the number one target we bear in mind is the FinTech software developers for uh, banks or startups. The similar to the first one is the FinTech product support engineers. Once there's a product, we need to update, maintain. So we also need a lot of uh, software engineer to uh, maintain, support the product. Also the other type, uh, new technology, blockchain programming and blockchain developers, engineers. So uh, for example, all of the cryptocurrency or smart contract, all of those products underlying that is a new programming uh, language and the techniques is a blockchain systems. So we will design some of the classes to train students to learn blockchain and so on. And in addition to these three job roles, uh, my personal research interest and expertise is in data science. So we will have uh, classes uh, focus on training financial data analysts, financial data scientists, and also, uh, it also fits the current uh, skill demand for the traditional financial quantitative analysts that are doing financial engineering jobs. So more and more of the companies, uh, they're also using various kind of machine learning techniques in uh, this kind of quantitative analyst job roles. So uh, the other uh, job roles, uh, intelligence analysts in cryptocurrency derivatives, all of the cryptocurrency related backend operation, cybersecurity analysts for FinTech firms, FinTech compliance manager analyst or uh, you can also become, could also become FinTech product managers. So these are the uh, examples of job roles. So now we move on to the program highlight. So the program is a one and a half year program. It's a three semester. At NUS, uh, every year we have two semesters. So this is a important uh, information, one and a half year program. The target admission uh, 40, we, we could admit uh, up to 50, but uh, depending on the quality of the applicants. The target number of the first year is 40 students. 
So in the first year, we only admit full-time students. That's another information for you. For the part-time, likely it will be in the second year or third year. It depends. We will decide, uh, say, later. But the first year, we only admit full-time students. The uh, first year, we also only have one intake. We admit students now and uh, starting in August 2021. We won't have admission for the January 2022 intake. So there's no spring in the first cohort. In the future, maybe the part-time students part is for sure. We will admit part-time student. Uh, it's just in second year or third year. So the uh, spring semester intake question, then maybe we will consider that. This bullet and the, this bullet. So the goal is we hope to train the graduate student who can know both uh, finance and uh, uh, all of the relevant computing knowledges, especially AI machine learning, software engineering. So they can become a successful FinTech software developer or FinTech data analyst or uh, FinTech quantitative analyst. That's the uh, goal, it's FinTech talent training. Okay, next. So the uh, curriculum program structure, the class, well, the program is 52 MC in total. So component include 28 MC required class, 12 MC electives, and there is a FinTech capstone project. So at NUS 28 MC, roughly speaking, it is equivalent to seven classes. So you will have three, seven, core classes, required classes, and the three elites, and the 12 MC from the capstone project, which includes uh, industry seminar, some workshop to prepare for your internship. And there is a industry project or academic research project for you to work on, depending on your choice. So I think most of the students probably they prefer the internship industry project. So that's the internship part. So elites is very uh, flexible. We have a long list of classes for you to choose from uh, school computing and the department of finance from the business school. So uh, later I have a slide to go over the so required class. I'll explain the details now. So for the uh, core uh, curriculum, there are uh, 28 MC. So the design is you will have uh, say 12 MC from, uh, they are the new classes designed only for the FinTech master uh, students. There are two classes. They are the fundamentals of uh, programming. They are the core required class of MCOM general track. Okay, that's a new uh, master program. Prof Chin just mentioned. There will be two other uh, fundamental classes in finance. They are the required class of MS in finance core modules. So uh, the FinTech master program is built upon these two programs, the MCOM general track and the MS in finance. So there are two, two required class overlap with those two uh, master programs. And there are 12 MC, uh, we break it into several pieces of the class. They are the required class only for the FinTech master students. So the first one is the FinTech innovation for consumers. You will learn why is the uh, online, pe all of the ecosystem for the FinTech uh, application innovations for consumers, such as uh, online crowdfunding, peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, all kinds of payment solution, mobile payment, uh, very innovative payment, money transfer, and uh, borrowing and lending. So that's about the, that's for the first class. The second class, I think many of you are interested in working in the finance industry, banks, insurance companies. So there will be another class uh, design to tell you what are the important digital transformations. That means the adoption of new fintech technologies that banks and the insurance companies. What is useful? What are the important ones? And the third class is about blockchain innovations. So you will be about cryptocurrency and the smart contracts. So probably most of you have in mind blockchain is equivalent to Bitcoin, uh, which uh, part of it is true, but there are a lot of new innovations, especially for industry. There are uh, smart contract could be even more important than just the Bitcoin. So that's the uh, third class. So the fourth class is a programming class. You will learn how to do blockchain programming. The fifth class is machine learning in finance. At school computing, we have various uh, AI machine learning classes. So uh, this one is customized, tailored for the 
uh, finance students. So we will focus more on the machine learning or data mining algorithms, more relevant to the financial applications. So that's all. And uh, the four required class from uh, general track or MS in finance, they are relatively the uh, fundamental ones. So some of the uh, students, they are, if they have a bachelor degree in computer science or bachelor degree in finance, then they may have to know those. So for those students, you can replace it by uh, other core modules in the income general track. That includes uh, enterprise systems, uh, fundamentals of data analytics, uh, popular class AI or software engineering. So for the CS student, definitely they already know programming, data uh, structure and algorithm. Then they can replace by any one of it. So if you have uh, on the special cases, if you take all of this, we may approve you to take just any electives instead. That's the uh, core curriculum. Okay, so for the electives, uh, we split it into three tracks to meet the three job roles demand, but there's no rule, you can select whatever you like. So there's no rule like you must see, select three classes from one vertical. Okay, so this is just more like a recommend, recommended list. So the first uh, group is the computing technology. The second group is AI and data science. The third group is digital financial transactions. So for the full list, you can find it from our website because the list is not sure. It's not like only three class, three class, three class. It's uh, each one has like 10 classes. So that's the uh, elective. And the, the target students for the admission, I think many of you asking the question in the Q&A or chat about admission. So the admission detail information you can find from the uh, website. So the target students we try to admit are the students, their undergraduate training is in computing, CSIS, CEG. So this group of students probably they have the less uh, problem uh, in taking uh, the core modules. We will also admit students from uh, finance, but I hope the student, they can provide some evidence to show they can handle the programming classes, right? Because you can see they are uh, blockchain programming. They are the machine learning in finance. Those are even the more advanced one. They are also two required class for the fundamentals of programming. And uh, for the, uh, we also admit the student from the science and engineering. For example, if you have background in statistics, I think probably that's another majority uh, type of student they are interested in. So uh, of course, uh, we will admit them. Then uh, international student required to submit GIE, GM80, TOEFL, IELTS, following the standard rules. So details of the rule you can find from the internet. So for the uh, admission, we will evaluate the uh, applicants based on all aspects, not just say we don't have a lower bound for any one of the criteria. So, but we will evaluate all. So the focus are like the reputation of your undergraduate training is from which university, your uh, GPA cap of you, and the major of your undergraduate training. Do you have relevant work experience? Do you have relevant uh, project experience? How strong is your reference letter? All of these aspects together. So if you, some of the aspect you are very weak, then you need stronger evidence in other, other aspects. So overall we'll come Com, uh, compare and assess holistic space. So the application deadline is April uh, 15. Toward the very end, so let me just summarize why you, uh, you should choose us, MSc in uh, Digital Financial Technology at NUS. So the rep academic reputation and the ranking of NUS uh, is, has been consistently ranked very top. So the new QS ranking, we rank uh, number 11. Prof. Jin also mentioned uh, to everyone's surprise, also the SOC professor's surprise, everybody's hard work output. We rank number four globally in computer science and uh, IS in the uh, most recent QS ranking. So our the second thing uh, I want to highlight is our program is among the very few. There are uh, in, all over the world in Asia, there are several new FinTech master programs. But among all of the programs, our programs are among the very few that are taught by computer science, computing professors, and finance professors. If you check the other programs carefully, a lot of them, they are hosted under engineering school. So the most professor 
likely originally they do financial engineering or operation research. I think several programs are like that. There are also some of the FinTech master program is hosting in the business school. So most of the class, it's like MBA class. It's less about uh, learning programming. It's more uh, business centric. So you can differentiate based on your needs. Our program probably is among the very few. It's really rely on the expertise from the two most relevant and correct uh, reference discipline, computer science and finance. So that's one thing I want to highlight. And the, the other thing is, if you are not Singaporean, uh, FinTech and economic prospect of Singapore, of course, it's uh, one of the important consideration, right? And uh, it's the best in ASEAN and also very top in Asia. So living in Singapore and the US, I really like it very much. So after I graduated from New York, uh, NYU, New York, and I moved here and I stayed here, I didn't leave. That's almost 15, 14, 15 years. So uh, Singapore is very safe, especially compared to like New York. So it's very clean. And uh, the most spacious living in all of the financial hubs, because most of our financial hubs, it's very crowded, expensive. Singapore, the government plan and organize everything well. Now you can easily go online to Google. Prochain also show you our new building. It's just behind us, behind me, actually my office, it's building. And uh, so if you join us, you will see the new building. You can enjoy the new facility of uh, school computing. And the last slides, uh, just one slide to talk about the uh, PhD program. I think most of you here are interested in the master program. So if you have questions about uh, PhD program, you can email me directly. So the master program is more for industry job. For some of you, maybe you want to have master first and then uh, continue as PhD, which is fine. So we don't have a master plus PhD in FinTech. So far, we don't have it. So the PhD program is more for academic career. So for those of you who want to become a professor, or lecturers in uh, FinTech, then you can consider PhD. For those of you who want to work in industry, uh, the FinTech master program is the better fit. So the ap ap application admission information is online. PhD program, four to five years. I want to highlight, we have very, very generous scholarship for the FinTech PhD program. So you can also find it online, especially for Singaporean, uh, probably Singaporean and the PR, the scholarship I think is the highest with the uh, relatively low responsibility among all of the PhD programs in Singapore. The curriculum is very flexible, personalized, interdisciplined by uh, say 20 plus potential supervisors from all of the relevant faculties in NUS, uh, computer science, IS, finance, statistics, and uh, engineering. So you can find the potential supervisor's information on the website. So all of the details are on the website. The application deadline is also April 15. So if you have any questions about PhD programs, so feel free to email me later. Okay, so now uh, I turn back to Alvin and we can start the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Wang. Okay, we are now come to the segment where you decide what we are gonna talk about via this question and answer segment. So if you have any question for us, I haven't asked it yet, don't hold back any longer. Okay, fire away in the Q&A section. Our NUS team is still monitoring the session for this, the, for new questions that you have asked. So we will try our best to answer it. So our three professors will be on hand to answer your queries today. Let's see, the first questions we have so uh, what is the potential career path after successfully completed this program? Okay. So yeah, let me take this question. I think I more or less, uh, my slides focus on this question. Right? I gave you several examples of the potential uh, employer and uh, that includes all of the uh, large financial institutions in Singapore and also a large number of fintech companies in Singapore. And also the fin many financial firms, IT firms, they have innovation labs in Singapore. So those are the employers. And for the job roles, I also explain, uh, give several examples, right? Software developers, uh, AI developer, data scientist, uh, quantitative analyst in those traditional financial engineering jobs. So the students, most of the students, I think they are uh, relatively, they are fresh graduates or short work history. Uh, then this will be the potential career path and the employers after graduation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's see. 
So next question is, uh, is there any age limit for enrolling for this program? Okay, as far as I know, there is no official rule. Yes. So uh, again, our uh, admission evaluation will based on all aspects. So uh, we won't set an age limit. So if there's a strong candidate, uh, relatively old, I think we will still give admission offer. And, or any other uh, panelists have uh, other response to add? I mean, in our master's program, I mean, like for example, for master's of computing, uh, occasionally we take in uh, fairly uh, mature students as well in their forties and sometimes even fifties, but um, small number of them, I think. Yeah. Usually we look at the factors, like why the person uh, wanted to pursue master's at that stage. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof Chin. Thank you, Prof Wang. Let's see the next questions. I'm a working professional with a full-time job in the financial risk management industry. So I understand that this is a full-time program. Will I be able to accommodate the program schedule? That means so I guess probably too demanding if you have a full-time job mm -hmm. because the uh, every semester you need to take four classes. So even the timetable fit your schedule or your employer allow you to come to attend the class. I think probably still too dem demanding. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I did get one suggestion, uh, namely that if, because we haven't, um, we're planning to consider the uh, part-time option uh, from the second year, but for the first year, we are just focusing on the full-time option. And then um, for those who are currently working in Singapore, they could opt for the graduate cert in computing foundation that we have. So we have two grad cert there. You could opt for that. Uh, some of the modules there will can be used to meet the requirement of the program subsequently. So, so this could be a part-time path that they could take uh, prior to getting admitted into this uh, FinTech masters, at least for the first year. Yes. Let's see the next questions. What should non-computing students do for providing evidence of programming knowledge? Okay, so for, from my view, the more solid evidence is uh, they have work experience in uh, related to job roles, that's one. The second thing, they have done projects, uh, say they show some kind of, they have an undergraduate thesis and the undergraduate thesis is related to programming or they take programming classes, they do some kind of projects, right? At some of the students, they have the internship projects or uh, some kind of competition, data competition projects, any kind of evidence of the project. At least they know, say, some kind of data science. Uh, of course, programming is the best fit, but they also have the uh, data competition, data science. That also, usually you do that, you need the programming, right? So I think all of those could be the evidence. And of course, they, if they take some kind of online classes, uh, or certificates in programming that will be considered too. Also, on the on the other hand, we also have the IT five zero zero one and uh, three. So those programs are run at an accelerated pace, but it will it will help introduce um, the student to the you know the foundations and basics of uh, computing and programming. I think that will also help the student build a stronger foundation uh, when they are in the program. Thank you, Prof. Jin. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, uh, the MSc is uh, Digital FinTech allows students to go for research in FinTech or is it job oriented? If you are inclined for research in FinTech, will this program assist one? Okay, so I, I would say the design, the spirit is job oriented. And uh, for students interested in uh, research in fintech. Of course, I think all the professors are very welcome. Welcome this kind of students, and uh, uh, I think if you don't have any relevant background, the masters in fintech. For example, you, you are from mechanical engineering, civil engineering. Uh, then, then uh, that's why I mean you don't have relevant background. Then you take the masters in fintech first. That will help. You, you will learn some, accumulate some domain knowledge, learn the easier part of the research skill, <clears throat> right? Then the, for the PhD, you can move on to the more advanced, uh, similar topics in that uh, focused area. So that will help. But if you are already quite advanced uh, in finance or uh, computer science, 
you can consider directly consider apply for the PhD in fintech. <clears throat> that everything will be for research rather than for working in the industry. That that would be my response. I don't know whether uh, the other two uh, panelists have any suggestion. I can actually chime in here and say that if you are really interested in research, but you don't have the right background, like uh, Koei was sharing earlier, this program is useful because it allows you to learn more about the topic, right, about the subject matter. And this will also help you in terms of doing research going forward because then you will understand what kind of research you want to do, right? Because, so my background is an engineer. I, when I switched into finance, I did a master's degree first. And I had a better understanding of what I wanted what I wanted to do when I did my PhD. So I think that's that's a crucial transition, and uh, this could be a worthwhile investment if you are really interested in doing that. Now, again, I think the the, the main focus will be on uh, career progression, uh, particularly the industry, and therefore it will be challenging to figure out what it is that you want to do in terms of research in the program. But I think this is a worthwhile experience, worthwhile uh, transition, because then you will have two different two different career paths in front of you. One would be the industry. And then the second, if you are really interested in academia, you can then make a transition to the PhD program. Uh, so that uh, so I feel that this could be worthwhile even for somebody who is not sure whether they want to do research or uh, industry. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Very also, the cap capstone uh, allow two options, right? One right. is uh, industry yes. oriented. The other one is um, internal project, you no, know, under AIDF or SOC, or even BIS. Um, and I think if you are uh, taking the uh, internal project, uh, quite often there is some research elements to it. Uh, it won't be a full blown research, but there will be some elements of research development that could lead you to. A good, a better background in that particular area. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, with Singapore government pushing for more hiring and increasing the minimum money salary for fintech industry, how would it affect the prospects for international students? I'm going to jump in here and say one thing, <laughs> okay. which is that it is a tough market for international students. Now, I speak from uh, the understanding of an MSc in finance uh, program. Uh, so for financial institutions, uh, even for other financial intermediates, uh, they, they uh, when they want to hire an international candidate for a finance show, I think it's more difficult for them to do so than if they want to hire an international candidate from a, for an IT role or for a fintech role. So I think it is more difficult now, but my sense is that this immigration issues or this uh, salary issue is less problematic when you're looking for an IT position or a fintech position rather than uh, like a traditional finance position. Now, nothing is easy, right? You need to show how valuable you are for the um, potential employers. So once you do that, then clearly there is a path, but, uh, but it's, it's all, I think it depends on the individual. Uh, I would be worried less about what is the average. I would be worried more about whether or not you can deliver in this, in this uh, you know, what, what the employers are looking for. So I, IMDA have an annual survey about the uh, job market situation for the IT sector. Of course, fintech is just one part of this IT sector. Uh, currently, I think there are about 180,000 IT professionals in Singapore you know, or, or related sort of discipline. And I think uh, they are still projecting a growth of about, I think, close to uh, 16,000 uh, new hires in the area uh, for the next few years. So I think there's still a good prospect in that sense. You know, as, as Johan said, not so much at the, uh, maybe not, not at the high level sort of a finance sector, but at least at the um, software engineering, IT sector, I think, I think the prospect still fairly good, I think. Yeah. If, if you have the right skill set. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. If my career goal is a <clears throat> quantitative analysis about quantitative trading, so is this program fitful for me? My view is depends uh, because at NUS we have several programs. The other two, we have two other financial engineering programs. Uh, one is a bit more industry oriented, the other one is a little bit more, uh, say, uh, theoretical oriented. And uh, But now a lot of the quantitative trading, the, how to say, the, the skill set requires programming and the machine learning. So we three programs. 
uh, for this kind of particular job role, we add different values. Yeah, so our uh, FinTech program has more machine learning AI data science, but has less uh, modules about the traditional financial engineering. That would be my answer. So it depends on your background interest. And uh, so you can consider uh, one of the three programs. I think I don't know whether Johan can have any other inputs or for this <laughs> question. So my, my, my background, uh, actually I have a degree in financial engineering. So if you're doing, if you want to do quantitative trading, I think you need both skill sets. So you do need to understand better about uh, the financial markets. Uh, so financial engineering programs may be better for that. Uh, however, if like, like Koei is saying, now many of the quantitative strategies actually require deeper data analysis running for example it's not just running simulations right? typically previously when we are doing this we just running simulations it's more than that now because you really need to get as much as possible from the data so if you want to learn more about that then this program could be uh, i think a good fit as well now again you need to understand what it is that you want to do in quantitative trading uh, and once you understand what it is it you want to do then it will be clear to you whether financial engineering or quantitative finance or this program is a better fit. Thank and like we say, we have three, now we're gonna have three programs that seem to have some uh, reasonable fit for people who want to do quantitative uh, trading. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. For the answers. Yes. <clears throat> Someone asked if one has 10 years of experience in IT industry, so is this cost right fit for it? Okay, so judging only by this criterion, I think it's a good fit. But again, like I mentioned, for each one of the applicants, we will consider all aspects rather than just work experience. Right? So we will also consider the uh, say what, what exactly is the job role in the IT industry. And right? also the, the original undergraduate or master background, what's the major, what's the cap. And uh, because this case, I think working in industry longer, so we will put more emphasis on the uh, work. What what the exactly what is the job role? What kind of uh, employer and so on? So we consider everything. Yeah, this, this alone I think is fine. Yes, it's a fit. So of course, uh, the program is structured to allow people with uh, you know three different backgrounds to come in, including those with less uh, IT uh, skill set. And for those with uh, a really good IT skill set, uh, what will happen is that for some of those modules like IT 5001 and 5003, uh, those could be replaced by other modules, I think. So yes, we allow right. replacement of modules uh, where, the, where the candidate already know those areas to replace them with other modules that are available in the uh, curriculum, you know, the electives or other core modules that are available. If we choose to take industry project. So is there a secure internship opportunity? At uh, NUS, we have uh, School of Computing, we have uh, uh, MS in Business Analytics, which has a similar design of Capstone projects. So in that program, it's guaranteed, it's a secured. We will try to work on the model that's similar or the same as the MSBA. And we will also have a new program, MCOM General Chat at the uh, School of Computing. So uh, we will work together to design the capstone project. So it will be similar. So uh, if I have to answer yes or no now, then I would say yes. So especially the now probably is not that trouble for the MSBA. I also participate a lot uh, supervising the uh, capstone project and so on. So it's always uh, now because uh, the, this kind of job market is in demand. So there are a lot of company. Every time I go to the company to supervise the internship, and talk to the uh, industry professional. They all like NUS graduates and they want more internship. So I would expect this probably for my job role as a coordinator, this won't be that troublesome. Then we can easily find a lot of internship opportunities. All right, thank you, Prof Huang. Okay, we are having a lot of questions coming in, uh, but due to time constraint, we will probably be taking a few more last uh, questions. So if anything that we didn't able unable to answer, we will uh, you can actually um, email to us. So let me let's see the next questions. So um, can I explain the software engineering job that this uh, MS uh, I mean this program pro prepare us for, and how is it different from the job at the traditional software companies? Okay, I think uh, Prof. Chinatra is the expert in 
software engineering. So let me answer the part I know. So again, I, a lot of my knowledge, I, from, I supervised my uh, internship students. So that's also why I wrote down on the slides in that uh, if you work, a lot of fintech companies, they are the uh, new startup. Uh, if you work for those companies and the, from the feedback of the employer and also the students, they feel if you know the uh, market, the product of that particular startup better, that will help them to write the program. Rather than they need to keep asking around our students and U.S. students, they need to keep asking around or Google to learn what exactly is that. It's the difference, right? So you develop a software product because of the a smaller company, then you need to write more like a full stack software developer. You do more uh, wider scope. So if you know why is this going on, why is this really for, then uh, it's more efficient uh, for you to develop the software product. Uh, that's as far as I know. And uh, I don't know whether the other two uh, panelists have other inputs or comments. I think we are not targeting at general software engineering. We are targeting at you know uh, roles that uh, an IT professional can play in the fintech center, fintech and finance center. So we will expect you to have a good base in, you know, from the program, they're expected to have good base in the uh, IT skill set. And for that, we have various uh, modules to help in the process, like uh, programming methodology modules, and also uh, preparation modules in, in software engineering, you know, covering things like cloud services, uh, so these are modules that uh, are, are available in the curriculum that we will, uh, you know, uh, make available to the students who would like to have a good base in that area. And, uh, you know, and, and part of the uh, program will be to, to take, to, for, for a possibility for you to take up, uh, you know, the domain knowledge in the finance sector uh, from our colleagues in the, uh, you know, uh, School of Business. And then at the same time, to um, to work with uh, like in in the capstone uh, sort of project, uh, we are looking to currently. I guess uh, Kerwe, uh, work, I guess it will be team project that that, that the students will be uh, allowed to work on, right? As well, yes, so that they could uh, have you know students from different skill set could come together to yes to learn from each other and also to partake in a more comprehensive uh, project. Okay. Both for industry as well as for uh, some of the internal projects that are available. Yes. Like in the AIDF uh, center, they have several funded research, um, and some of which are in collaboration with industry, and you know to to look into some areas. And they will, and then together with uh, colleagues in our department, they will be uh, uh, providing some internal projects uh, that will uh, train the student to to have uh, comprehensive skill sets. Uh, in this space. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Okay, we are going to have the last two questions for today's session. Okay. The, I have already graduated, so I was majored in uh, business code. I make up uh, <coughs> programming classes on MOOC. What? Um, sorry. MOOC. MOOC. Yes. Yeah, you, you, you certainly, um, you know, uh, would be good to get prepared uh, through some of these uh, online classes. Again, as I said, you know, uh, within the curriculum, we also have fairly rigorous and accelerated uh, programs to cover some of the methodology topic, software development methodology, and then more deeper data structures and algorithm skill set. And we will also be introducing some uh, computing methodology modules uh, uh, depending on the area that you uh, are planning to have a good base in, you know, to help you be prepared uh, for for a more technical role where needed. Yeah, with the domain knowledge, I think that will be helpful. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Chin. So we're gonna have the final question, last one. How about the schedule for this class? Is it on the weekend only or weekdays? Okay, so I think the uh, for most of our master program from school computing, it won't be weekend only. It will be uh, for this class okay. because it's a full time and uh, we, we haven't decided, but for the uh, most of the other master programs it's on the weekday evening. So Thank when you. we have the part-time students for other master programs, so the classes are typically on 
uh, all of the weekday evenings, so the part-time students can attend. All right. Just to just to clarify that, I mean, in the sense that for the first year of the program, as has been mentioned multiple times, this will be a full-time only program. So if you are expecting a weekend only class or, for example, a weeknights only class, then we then I think going for the first batch may not be the the best idea. You may want to wait for the second or third year when we have a better infrastructure for perhaps for a part-time program. I think this is a roundabout way of asking whether or not we can do part-time. And the answer is, I think it will be, be, be quite difficult for the first for the first cohort. All right. Thank you, Prof, for the answer. So this marks the conclusion of our Q&A session. So uh, for those questions that we, uh, we did not answer, so don't worry. Yeah, you can still email us at uh, pgc at nus.edu.sg. So we will try to uh, answer them. So just email, keep your questions coming through this email. So that's about that for us. Okay, so thank you once again for spending some of your weekend with us. Thank you, Prof, for the sharing. Okay, and uh, I have just one last video to share with you, which details the application and admissions uh, process for international students into uh, our NUS program. So for the international students, do stay back a bit to, to look at this uh, uh, video. So until we meet again, hopefully at NUS, so don't forget to mask up, maintain a safe distance from others while you're out of your home. And don't forget to stay cool and keep your chin up. We may still be in a pandemic, but I'm confident that we will all get through this stronger and sooner than you think. So have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Overseas study plans. Don't let it get in the way of your dreams. Pursue a prestigious master's degree with the National University of Singapore. Ranked number one in Asia and 11th in the world by the QS World University Rankings for the year 2021. Start your journey now. Step 1. Log on to the link below to find out about the different programs that we offer. Step 2. Apply to NUS by submitting your application online via this link. Step 3. NUS will send you a letter of offer when your application is successful. Step 4. If you decide to accept the offer, make your tuition fee payment online before the stipulated deadline. Step 5. You need to then declare your travel plans on the NUS Overseas Travel Declaration System due to the COVID-19 situation. Step 6. You will need to apply for a student visa. To find out more about this, go to the Singapore Immigration and Checkpoints Authority website. Please refer to the following link. Step 7. Before enrolling, you need to complete your pre-admission medical examination. More information can be found on the following link. Step 8. You can now make arrangements for accommodation and medical insurance. There are many options to stay on campus, or you can opt for off-campus housing. NUS will help all full-time students subscribe to the university's medical insurance scheme. Step 9. You can now book a flight ticket. Three days before arriving in Singapore, you will need to submit your arrival information and health declaration online. Please refer to the following link. We look forward to seeing you in Singapore and NUS.